use a soft cloth to wipe out, to wipe off the external part of the hearing aid. We have all heard at times a high-pitched whistling sound coming from a hearing aid. This is called feedback. In some instances, feedback is normal. For example, as I mentioned earlier, when the hearing aid is cupped in your hand, that is a, no is a time when the hearing aid should be normally whistling. Or if you place your hand up next to the hearing aid, that's another time when the hearing aid will whistle. If feedback occurs while the individual is wearing the hearing aid and there is nothing that you can tell that's instigating that feedback, it's important to check the seating of the hearing aid in the ear. It may be loose and this would cause the hearing aid to whistle. So check the seating and push the hearing aid in. Another thing to do is check the volume for the correct setting of the hearing aid. If it's set too loud, it also may be whistling. Another cause of this feedback is if there's excessive wax or debris in the ear canal. So have someone look in the ear canal to make sure there's not too much wax present. And of course, make sure that there isn't an object that's too close to the hearing aid that's producing the feedback. Next, we're going to take a look at the insertion and removal of hearing aids. For inserting a behind-the-ear style hearing aid, pull up and back on the earlobe with one hand and hold the ear mold of the hearing aid between your index finger and thumb. Insert the canal portion of the ear mold first, then seat the top of the ear mold by pushing it in in one or two places. Hook the hearing aid itself up and over the top of the ear. When inserting an in-the-ear hearing aid, Pull up and back on the earlobe with your hand. Grip the hearing aid with your thumb and your forefinger. Insert the canal portion first and then seat the body of the hearing aid by pushing it in with your thumb in one or two places. Another device you may encounter is called a cochlear implant. Cochlear implants are surgically implanted electronic devices designed to provide enhanced sound detection for individuals with severe to profound hearing loss who often cannot obtain adequate benefit from hearing aids. Communication is a two-way street and it is up to both the speaker and the listener to cooperate. In a caregiving situation, it is important that that caregiver understand these strategies. Before beginning to talk to any hard of hearing person, get the attention of that person. This can be done in a number of ways. You can tap them on the shoulder, say their name. If a person uses glasses, hearing aids, or assistive dish devices, make sure they have them on. Be sure to face the person in a good light. Speak up, but do not shout. Many times I have seen people shouting into hearing aids of hard of hearing people. Speak slowly and clearly. I've been asked many times, how can you speak more clearly? I tell people there's a beginning and an end to each word. Use both. For example, someone's not brushing their hair. They are brushing their hair. Identify the topic before you begin speaking. An example of this could be you come into the room and say to a patient, my mouth hurts so bad, I had four root canals today. The patient goes, huh? Better to identify the topic. At the dentist today, I had four root canals and my mouth hurts badly. That, that leads to some sort of association. Rephrase rather than repeat a misunderstood sentence or words. It's very important to eliminate, turn down, 
or move away from background noise. A television is the most obvious form of background noise, but there can be air conditioners, small heating units, medical equipment that could interfere with communication. Do not eat, smoke, chew gum, or obstruct your face when talking to the hard of hearing. It's good too if the person looks like they are not understanding what you're saying that you ask them what can be done to make communication easier. Don't be afraid to write nor use body gestures. Ask questions to verify understanding. Stay away from yes-no questions like is your niece coming tonight at 8 to visit? Versus, what time is your niece coming? This makes the client tell you the time in a verifying form. Cooperate if the person requests clarification. Sometimes that becomes difficult when you're working and in a hurry and have been asked for the third time to repeat. When people are ill or tired, shorten your conversation. Listening is a hard job when you're hard of hearing. It's very tiring. If you're sick or uncomfortable, your concentration will be elsewhere. Get closer to the person and give them some time to respond. If you remember that unfair hearing test, if you're hearing things that sound a little bit mumbly, you're going to need a little extra time to figure out what that word means. It is very important to alter the environment to benefit a hard of hearing person. For example, if you're pushing a person down the hall in a wheelchair and you need to ask them a question, stop the wheelchair, stand in front of them and ask them the question. When you're talking to a patient in a bed, do not sit next to them. Make sure they can see your face clearly and perhaps a chair next to the bed is more appropriate. A patient may come into your setting who is a member of the deaf community. In the deaf community, sign language